Jinkies, that was not good. I had a couple friends of mine see this movie before I did, and they all hated it, and I'd already seen a lot of the buzz online about it not being very good, and I just thought to myself that it couldn't possibly be as bad as people were saying. But, uh, hooey! It's, it's really just not good. It's a shockingly confusing fumble of a sequel. Like, the most fun I had going to see the new Joker movie was in the car ride to and from it because I was listening to Warhammer 40k lore on the Horus Heresy. And just listening to that was better than seeing Joker fully ado. Fair warning, I'm going to be getting into the nitty gritty. I will be dumping spoilers on you out the wazoo for this film just to give you my full thoughts on all of it. It is confusing how badly this movie missed the mark. Like, I know sequels are never really going to be as good as the original. That's always such a tall order. Like, that is an almost impossible Herculean task. But this one is way off. Like, it is just not close. And I wasn't surprised that there's so many musical numbers in it. That was well established a long time ago that this was going to be like a pseudo musical to a certain extent. I'm not a fan of musicals in any way, shape, or form, really. There's a few of them I like, but overall, it's not one of my favorites. But I was willing to go in with an open mind if it was a good movie and the musical numbers somehow added to it, but they don't. The music's fine, like, I don't think the music is bad or anything, but the musical numbers actually just feel like filler content to try and distract you from how choppy and clusterfucky the movie itself is. Like, it feels like they were a big afterthought that they needed to just start inserting to fill space. Because this isn't a sequel that was planned. The Joker movie was supposed to be a one-off, but it made so much money that they came back for a sequel. And it really does feel like a soulless cash grab. It doesn't have a story to tell. It doesn't have a point. There's some cool scenes, and a couple of the musical sequences have some really impressive visuals, but they don't add anything, and a lot of the musical numbers don't even tie into the scene that preceded them. They are totally isolated in Arthur's head, like in his fantasy, and they don't actually even relate to anything narratively, so it just feels kind of worthless. Not all of them, but I'd say probably the majority of them don't actually even relate to what's happening plot-wise. They just are a random musical number. Some of them do relate and they're okay, like they're not awful, but I just think it would have been more effective if they just talked instead of sang at each other. That happens a lot. So like Arthur will be mid-conversation with somebody and then he'll just like break out into song. And I come and I cry. And I look in the mirror, and I say, who is that guy? Because society is seeming on the brink. And when I d sleep with an itchy bass, my finger will stink. And it's like, what, what the fuck is this? Like, it becomes unbearable how often that happens in this movie. By the eighth or ninth musical sequence like that, I got up to go take a tinkle break, and I heavily contemplated just going home. I don't want to exaggerate and say this is like the worst movie I've ever seen, because it's not. It's not even the worst movie of the year, not even close. That honor still goes to Borderlands movie. It's also not the worst sequel ever made, but it is probably the most disappointing sequel I've seen. It just doesn't have a point. And these musical numbers just feel like bloat to try and take your attention away from how weak the story is. This isn't really a Joker movie, it's more of like a Harley Quinn origin story, which would have been fine if it was good. It's just not. It also feels like Todd Phillips has regrets and isn't proud of the first movie, because a lot of what happens in this, in this movie is undoing a lot of what the first one did. So, the Joker's not even really in this movie. I'm just gonna tell you right now, it's mainly Arthur Fleck just being sad. Like, Arthur Fleck going through bad things. He is completely regressed into just the old Arthur Fleck, who doesn't have that Joker persona anymore and that, like, confidence or anything. But I do want to be clear, I still think Joaquin Phoenix does an incredible job with this character. I just think the writing around him was significantly weaker on, on this rodeo. Lady Gaga, I also think, does a really good job as Harley Quinn. But it's just really frustrating how... It feels like they just ham-fisted musical numbers in here because Lady Gaga is such a good singer. So pretty much every scene she's in, she's singing. Like, I don't think she really got a chance to shine and show, like, her acting prowess, and I think she's a great actress. Instead, she just is forced to just sing every time she's on screen. So I think that just takes away from the character as well. But anyway, the Joker 
is not really a character in this movie. Even when he's in the makeup and putting on, trying to puff out his chest and put on the act of being the Joker, it is unrecognizable from how it was in the first movie. It feels so forced, and in this movie, the Joker's just kind of a fucking moron. Like, he's actually just kind of an idiot. So, a big component of this is him going to trial. And you've seen the trailers, I'm sure. He ends up representing himself. And I thought that was going to be the turning point where most of the movie had been back and forth on Arthur and Joker. Harley is obsessed with Joker, not Arthur. She doesn't care about Arthur that much. It's the Joker that she loves. And when that happens and he fires his lawyer in the middle of the courtroom, I thought it was going to be like, oh, he's going to go into that Joker we saw at the end of the first movie. He doesn't. And really, the entire courtroom drama section of this movie, which is a huge piece of it, is just so flat. Because it's a complete steamroll. Like, we saw everything that happened in the first Joker movie, but a good chunk of this trial is them just telling you what all of us already saw from the first movie. So it just becomes kind of wasteful. The only good moment of the trial is when Gary takes the stand. That back and forth between Gary and the Joker is by far the best part of this whole movie. And it doesn't last that long. Everything else in the courtroom is just really underwhelming. There's nothing the Joker or Arthur or his team can really do to get him out of that situation, so you're just seeing him get fucking slapped by the consequences of his actions. Which could have been fine, like, I, I think that's a fine narrative point to go down, but there needed to be something in there to make it worth watching, because basically what we're getting is like a lore dump, a recap of what we've already seen. And even when Arthur tries to slip into the Joker in the courtroom, it just doesn't work in my opinion. Like, he doesn't make any arguments, he doesn't even like try and defend himself or make some kind of statement or anything at all. He just talks in a circle, ineffectively. And then he imagines himself killing some people, but that's it. Like, it just, I don't, it just, this doesn't work. I didn't think it worked at all when he tried to be the Joker here. Especially when you consider that a good chunk of this film is dedicated to try and get the audience to buy into the idea that Arthur and the Joker are separate, like it's a split personality. Like, that's his defenses argument that they try and make to help him out in court. And they really try and make you buy into that idea. They even have, like, an animation that plays at the beginning of, of, the, of the movie. And that video is supposed to try and, like, I don't know, kind of push you down that thought process. But that is so stupid. That doesn't work at all because you've seen the first movie. Like, you've already seen the first movie. Why are we even trying that? It wasn't executed very well. Like, that whole idea of trying to separate these two, it just doesn't work. It's pretty poorly done. I will say the thing that I thought had the most promise was Harley Quinn. Since a lot of this is basically her origin story, they did set up some interesting ideas. Like, like how she's kind of just manipulating the Joker. Like, she lies to him a lot in order to get close to him and kind of goad him in certain directions because that's what she fell in love with was the Joker and, like, the idea of the Joker. So she's constantly, like, manipulating him and it's, I think, could have been an interesting dynamic if it wasn't always just in sing-song fashion and if it wasn't always just, like, hammered home what she's doing towards the end. And the ending of this movie super sucks. The ending of this movie is, like, actually atrocious. So... The courtroom drama is starting to wrap up. He's clearly not winning. He eventually then goes to the jury and starts talking about how, you know, the Joker's not real. It was never real. It's always been Arthur. Uh, which is like that big moment like, oh, he's been faking it this whole time. There is no, like, second, you know, personality or anything. The Joker's... It's a complete fucking ruse. It's a sham. It's always just Arthur. And while this is going on, uh, a bomb goes off at the courthouse. That's like... Like, the, that came out of nowhere. This whole movie doesn't have any, like, action, per se. There's a couple things that happen in a fantasy where, like, the Joker gets shot. Or the Joker hits the judge with a gavel. Like, that all happens in a fantasy, but in the actual reality of the film, nothing like that happens at all. So this bomb explosion comes out of fucking nowhere. Like a jump scare. So, bomb blows up in the courthouse. Joker escapes. He just walks right out, and he's going to Harley, who doesn't really want to see him because after what Joker said about the Joker's not real, it's only Arthur, she storms out of the courtroom and she doesn't return his call. He starts fucking singing to her over voicemail for the millionth time, just another goddamn song, and she ignores it. He leaves the courthouse, he gets picked up by some, like, Joker super fans who get him, put him in the car, and then he runs away from them to try and find Harley. Before he gets out of their car though, there's statements made by the two people in Joker makeup about how like the whole city's gonna burn this and that. 
And it seems like Arthur Fleck has like regret and doesn't agree with that. He gets out of the car and starts running. And I think that moment, and he's also getting chased by the Joker's like, we still love you, we love you, Joker. I think that's a moment that's supposed to be, it's very on the nose, supposed to be for the audience to be like, oh, people are relating to the most extreme, unhinged parts of the Joker and using it as a platform for violence type thing. And Arthur is running away from that, trying to find Harley to start a life of love with her. When he finally finds her on the iconic staircase, she wants nothing to do with him. She tells him that it's all just a fantasy. It's always been the Joker that she loves, not Arthur. And she, he threw away that fantasy, so the Joker's not real. It's only Arthur, and she leaves. It's all just a fantasy. Get the fuck out of here, Buster. Then he gets taken back into jail, thrown back in Arkham. And then he gets told he has a visitor, walks down a hallway. And this random dude, who we'd only seen a couple of glimpses of throughout the movie, like looking on like menacingly throughout the film occasionally, uh... Talks to him in the hallway asking if he can tell him a joke. And he's like, alright, yeah, if it's a quick joke. And he's like, yeah, I'll make it quick. And the joke basically just ends with him saying, gets what he deserves. And then shanks him uh, like five or six times and the Joker dies. Uh, Arthur Fleck collapses and dies. And in the background, it's blurred to make it really mysterious and very cinematic. The guy who has stabbed him, this random fucking psychopath, is now cutting his face in the shape of a smile. And it's... I believe, alluding to Heath Ledger's Joker, who had the scars in the shape of a smile. And if that is the case, I am pretty sure that's what it's trying to do there. If that is what it's actually aiming for, that is just insultingly shit. That, it doesn't fit at all. Like, you can start picking apart, like, the timeline till the cows come home, but even the context of this film, it just doesn't fucking fit at all. It is a terrible conclusion even setting aside the absurdity of this alluding to heath ledger's joker how this psychopath is now going to take on the mantle of the joker and be what we saw in the dark knight even setting aside the lunacy of that this movie actually just goes nowhere it ends in the exact same place it started without really much changing and he just dies in a hallway to a random guy there is no comeuppance for some bad people in this film. For example, the guards. Towards the end of the movie, there is a scene where the guards snap on Arthur after seeing him in the courtroom. They assault him, brutalize him, and there is an implied rape of Arthur by the guards. And the guards just kind of tip their hat to him at the end. That's it. They, they don't get any, like, punishment for that or anything. Which just, that's not a satisfying conclusion. Arthur is a bad guy. The Joker is a villain. But I don't think, like, it's necessarily the right call to have other villains beat him up, rape him, and those villains are fine at the end of the movie. Like, there should have been a moment where the Joker comes out and he kills those guards for that, or something to that effect. Like, it's just, this movie, it really feels like Todd Phillips hated the character he made, so wanted to unmake the character, like, as best he could. It's just so weird, the direction this movie goes. And beforehand, I know Todd tried to say that he believed music was like an integral part to exploring Arthur as like the complex character. I'm calling baloney on that. That's some fiddlesticks. No shot, because the music doesn't really explore him. The music doesn't really explore anything. It feels like it's here because Lady Gaga is here, and she's so good at singing. The music, like I said only sometimes even connects to what we're even seeing in the plot. Other times it's just totally isolated. Like, yes, it is a look inside of Arthur's psyche occasionally, but it doesn't contribute anything. It doesn't help with the understanding of the character or how Arthur sees himself, really, outside of, like, a couple of isolated instances of these sequences. Otherwise, they're just musicals for the sake of it. And it just feels worthless. It's just so odd to take it in that direction what i truly believed happened here is todd phillips made a great movie <clears throat> with the joker one that movie was incredible i liked it a lot Mo most people liked it a lot it's a very well done film and that movie made significantly more money than todd and the executives were expecting so he got that call offered a big check and said fuck it fine i'll phone in a sequel and he did but instead of just doing what most people do for an uninspired sequel where they kind of just repeat what the first one did a little worse for the second, 
He took it in the most unconventional route ever just to be quirky. Like, he took it in this completely different direction and did it terribly. Again, it's not like the worst movie I've ever seen, it's not even the worst sequel I've ever seen, but it is the most confusing one because there's no reason for it to exist, A. It's there just because money, a lot of money from the first one, we need the second one to hopefully get even more money from those piggy banks. And B, why in the fuck does it seem to have such a grudge against the first movie? Like I said multiple times now, it actually just feels like they took that character and broke it. Like, actually just, like, completely shat on what they built up for this character in the first movie. Instead of expanding on it, growing it, or even exploring it in a different way, they just redid it and wiped their ass with most of what they tried to establish in the first. It just doesn't make sense. And even when it has, like, an interesting idea or two, like, there were a couple moments in this film where I was like, oh, this is building up to something that could be cool. And then it goes to an unrelated musical number, kills its own momentum, comes back, and it's in a totally different spot. The movie's just choppy. Like, it is just choppy. So even when they have something that's starting to develop, it ruins it with a musical, and then never comes back to that momentum it was building. So, like, it just doesn't... It just doesn't work very well. There's a couple of things to like about it, like with the performances of some of the actors here, for sure. There are some very cool visual moments. Like I said, in the courtroom with Gary and Arthur, that is a very strong scene. Like, that whole sequence is very powerful. But outside of, like, these very rare instances of this film, there's just not a whole lot to like. So, yeah. I, I don't really give number reviews to things anymore. I always just answer the question, is it worth watching? And for Joker fully ado, Joker 2, no. I don't think it's worth watching. It actually just feels like a waste of time. It feels like this is a film that has no reason to exist. It never wanted to exist, but had to because of money. So, I don't think it's worth watching, and uh, it's, that's disappointing. It's really about it. See ya.